What's up and welcome. Today I'm going to be working on the wall boss, refining the wall boss. First I got to get to the wall boss. Luckily I got these all hooked up. Okay, so the wall boss is like um, Dungeon 7. This is like maybe the third or fourth revision into refining the wall boss. What? Did I do the right world? This looks like the right layout. this one three seven it, that must have been some uh, other world or something I was in all right so let's get all the way into the wall boss's room where it starts about the, the fight save here oh holy saladongs off the starboard side a vast how you been, man? I've been good. I've been really super busy. Um, but I think this super busy phase might actually be kind of kind of dying down a little bit. You know, able to do a little bit more fun stuff and and all that. Oh, you're on break. Sweet, man. Teak, what's up? How's it going? What the heck? I'm trying to chat, but the chat is not working for me right now, or it's making me log in. You're doing good, sweet man. Yeah, I've been, I have been getting a lot done. That's true, tons done. It's um, yeah, it's been a really, really busy time, like getting the game prepped for not only for Steam but for PlayStation and Xbox. It's, it's no easy task to get your game to be like ready on all of those platforms at once. So luckily, you know, <laughs> luckily I have double 11 to help me out with all that. But it's still a lot of work coordinating even just a code base of a game of this magnitude. You know, coordinating all of the code, 100, how many, how big is Songbringer right now? Uh, is it this one? 96,000 lines of code? Yeah, right? So 96,000 lines of code. I think there's a data count too. Yeah, 32,000 lines of data. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, is the conflicts. You're like, oops, sorry, I broke your build. Or it's like, Oops, sorry, they broke my build, you know. So that was that was going on a lot, but like we got it all, we got it all handled. It's all good now. <laughs> yeah, right. We got it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We got four thousand more lines, so we hit a hundred, and it looks like it's about to hit it. All right. So yeah, what I'm working on today is the wall boss. This is mostly just going to be a data fix, actually, just like playing with the data file. <clears throat> so for the wall boss, it's actually fear boss, and just fill it with more of hips just to get there right now. Yes, totally. Empty lines count. They completely count. You don't even need lorem ipsum. I can just freaking go to the bottom of a lot of a file, just hit enter about four thousand times. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, it's good to be chatting with you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. What's new? Like, what's what's new? And what's the news? Play the game in windowed mode today. Okay. Hmm. We don't really need to see um the HUD today. Okay, so the way this boss fight works, I think I need to actually turn on his health view. You participated in Lundara? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, congratulations. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, since the semester ended? Oh, nice. Yeah, you've been playing Zelda. Right on. Yeah, right on. Nice, T. So... The current kind of issue with the wall boss um, is that he has a he has a lot of hit points, but if you have he's got almost a thousand hit points, but still, if you have the chip and the glove, you can just really, really knock down his hit points pretty fast. And if, yeah, if you just basically sit here just wailing on him and you make sure you're hitting the right eye. Um, then you can get him down to die. He can die in the first room. That's basically the problem. So I gotta, I gotta make this so it's still a cool fight. You still want to keep attacking him the whole time, but he's probably not gonna die. He's actually just guaranteed that he's not gonna die in the first room and that it'll get a little more interesting too with a few more things, adjustments here to this boss fight. Yeah, you're trying to wean yourself off. Oh, you're starting, you're doing summer courses? Now you're working on, oh, and a new engine. Wow, cool. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling. Oh, what happened here? I left the game. I don't know if I've ever tried dying. I think it just died. I died while it was... While I was away from the, the game, I think I might have just found a new crash or whatever. It just kind of crashed there. Okay, so his hit points, let's go for twice as many hit points. Now, four times the amount of hit points, maybe eight. Like, with like so much crazy hit points that, that you're never going to get him down. But then, on the second screen, when it gets really close and you're about to get near the rock, the spikes if you haven't got his health down enough by then it will like it will basically guarantee that his health is only at a certain amount so that that last little bit where you're fighting and you're almost about to hit the spikes that's where it will like it will set his hit points to a certain amount that you can pretty much make it if you if you're attacking him fast enough you're going to be able to make it I know, right? Ooh, an in-game console, cool. 
Yeah, it does do this. Um, I used to do that, and then there was some issue with it where it was just not the right behavior for some player. I forget what it was. But yeah, um, it does auto-pause after six se 60 seconds always. Um, so I kind of left it that way. Like, it's just, it does auto-pause, but it does kick into a lower gear. It sets its frame rate to 10 frames a second as soon as you switch away. So the game is running at like a slower rate. That's why if, if you notice, whenever I do switch away from the game and you see it in the background, it's like really slow and stuttered because it's at 10 frames a second. It's just trying not to eat up your CPU while you're away from the game. Yeah, the Lexer. Speaking of Lexers and parsers and compilers and all that. Okay, so his hit points here are 152 to 270. We're just going to totally 270. No, we're going to need to be like more like 8. Let's go 808. Maybe 888. Tommy Killer, what's up, man? Yeah, sorry, it's been a minute. I've been busy as shit. I've been merging code and stuff. But now I am not busy as shit. I'm having a nice little moment here on the street with y'all. What's up? Hey, go. What's up, man? I'm sorry, too late. I know. I know. I'm always too late or too early. Okay, so this is the start, right? Four times the amount of hit points. Oh, does that even work? Can you set four times the hit points? I guess maybe the right thing to do about the auto pause is just auto pause quicker if you're if you've alt tabbed away. You know, so like 15 seconds goes by. You know, and then it auto pauses. So if I'm like, here, it's good. There. So I switched away. The game's running at 10 frames a second. Like, it would wait like 15 seconds before it paused itself. Okay, um, let's get rockin' there on the, the whole boss, though. Tom that. So I'm having my equipment. Oh, damn! Oh, yeah, that was cool. That was a really nice moment, though. Like, that was the last, um... The last version I uploaded to Steam was Sunday, and I played it that night, and it was really remarkable to like play your own video game and and not, finally, after like three years of working on it, finally be like, you know what? I don't want to actually add anything anymore, and, and guaranteed every single week or bi-weekly or whatever, however long, many times I've played the, through this whole game, like. All of those times, I wanted to add things. I'd be like, yep, I gotta add this, I gotta add that, the game's missing this and that. But this, finally, this time, I didn't actually want to add anything to Songbringer. I'm like, you know what, it's got everything. I just gotta fix a lot of bugs. There's like a lot of little things to, you know, polish, refine, make better. There's a lot left, to, a lot to do to polish it up. But I didn't want to actually add any more new content. Even though there are a few things I probably will end up adding later, but like for like an update or something like that, this for this the first version of Songbringer coming out, I'm happy with it being as much content as there is right here. It just needs to be a little bit shinier and better. Yeah, it's feature complete. Oh, check this out too. This is a kind of a cool feature. I just added this um today. If you go to your world seed and let's say you don't want to think up a world or whatever, you just press enter and it gives you a random six letter word from a custom dictionary. So uh, this is like totally custom here. Yeah. You got a night of coding? Oh, and then you're free. Yes. 
Yeah, so if you delete all these letters here, it gives you another random word. But then if you delete them one more time, it'll give you a completely random letters, right? So every two gives two two out of three gives you actual words. Volvox, what is that? The heck is a Volvox? Oh, I looked this up already. Oh yeah, it's a green, single-celled aquatic organism. This forms spherical colonies! Yeah, so it gives you both. You've got both words, and you've got better. That's a good one. That's simple. And then you got random ones, too. And it's kind of cool because it's a custom list. I can like go and make sure all of my favorite worlds are there. Like, I took I took a list of words that was like two thousand of the, about the most like common words in our language. Because there's 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 lists that are like ten thousand, eleven thousand. There's actually like in the English language, there's something like twelve thousand words, which are um six letters. But a lot of them are really obscure words that you're like. You know, that really don't, you're not going to recognize very instantly. So I wanted to filter that down and make a really custom list of words that was targeted more at like actual memorable words, you know, with a lot of sprinkled in that are kind of obscure a little bit, but not too obscure, you know. Volvox reminds you of the, that Evo, I remember this game. Was it? It was Volvox? Can you just type the seed? Oh, you mean on the keyboard? Oh, is that what you mean? Being able to type your seed on a keyboard would probably be a super handy feature if you're gonna be playing with the keyboard. I guess I never thought of that because I always intended the game to be played with the controller, but some people are gonna prefer a keyboard, I guess. Yeah, sure. I'll put that on the list for, for, for later. But yeah, being able to type your seed would be a nice little addition. I guess if possible, I can add this into the soon list. So type, um, be able to type your world seed if using a keyboard. Yeah, totally. Nice one. Exactly. Yeah, no, there's, it does not depend on any analog inputs. Yep, it just is all digital, basically. Yep, either a button is down or a button is up, you know, and it's, it's the same thing with directions. Like, it, you're either pressing the left direction or you're either pressing the up, maybe two. But you know what I mean? It's either down or it's up. It's on or off. Okay, so he's got twice as many, or a lot more hit points now. Let's make sure I have the sword, or the um, glove. And the chip. So those two items make you be able to attack the fastest with the most damage. So let's see how much damage I can do in one room. Just make sure that his hit points are really, really... Speed up time a little bit though. He's down to 800 now. Really well. Oh, his hit points got capped at 999. I thought there was some cap in there. All right, cool. So we got to get the cap off. It's probably in health component. Oh yeah, there's a cap at 999. Maybe 9999. Nine. 
or 9999. There we go. Jeez, who did that, huh? <laughs> Alex Pita! What's up, man? Belzio! Okay, we're speeding up time, see how much damage. Alright, there, now he's got like 3,200 hit points. How much damage can you do? Alex Pita, how's it going, man? Okay, what did I get to? 2,500 hit points? Yeah, I got to about 2,500. That's 700 hit points of damage in the first room. But I know people have been able to do it less... Yeah, so about here, he'll set his hit points manually. Okay, we will get that going. I'm good, man. I'm very good. I'm very well. I'm wizard well. I got enough wizard juice last night. That's what I'm calling sleep lately. If I get enough sleep, it's that I got my wizard juice, you know what I mean? So, um, I got enough wizard juice last night. I felt so good from getting enough wizard juice, I was like, I'm going to do a stream today. Alright, alright. So, we got that solved. Now, when he gets to the bottom screen... Uh, how about yourself, man? How are you doing? What's new? There's this one thing where he... He opens up an exit when he gets to the bottom of the screen. And that's about where... Here's how oh, fastest. Yeah, if position Y. Okay, so it's if position is the logic we're looking for. If pause chin, if posi- <laughs> uh, Alcohol is fun too. Position. That's what, okay, that's, oh, there it is, open exit. If area lock, if area flags boss. All right, here we go. This is where it opens the exits. This right here is where he's going to set his hit points. So this is where he's like guaranteeing that you can win. This is, we'll call this one tension. So if position Y is less than, say, I don't know, maybe 80. If area. F oh. Wait, yeah, if hit points, man, what is his hit points going to need to be? If his hit points are 3,200, he's got like around 3,200 hit, oops, 3,200 hit points, and you can do about, if you're really quick, you can do a whole screen in 9999, nine, 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 I don't know. So maybe 250, let's do like 250 hit points or so. so let's say 320. So this will be a tenth. Okay, so a tenth of his hit points. Oh, if his hit points are greater than a tenth. If area flags before boss, then set his hit points to a tenth of his hit points. So this is going to basically force his hit points to a certain point just to really amp up the tension at the very end of the fight. So there's still a chance that you could beat him. Well, actually, let me take a look at this logic for the hit points. Oops.
Right, okay, it's always based on a percentage if it's less than one, or then it's like an actual HP value. Okay, good, so that's that's good to confirm that. So yeah, let's do like an actual value here because I don't wanna change his hit po total hit points and then go, oops, I gotta go change this bit of AI code, or AI script. So if his HP is greater than say, 250 is going to be a lot. I'm thinking more like, like 50. I don't know. Let's try that. Oh, yeah. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to speed up time a lot. Still got 3,000 hit points. Oh, now he's got 200. Oh, he keeps on sitting it. What's going on here? Why does he keep on there? Oh, yeah, he's just running tension over and over and over and over and over. So it's running this AI, this script, or that, that tree. No, not necessarily, T. So yes, the, the whole point here is that yes, I want to build up the tension a lot, right? So um, the the what happens is if you're fast enough, if you're if you're like good enough as a player, you can beat him sooner, right? But the thing is that most likely he's going to have so many hit, so much hit points that it's going to push you down to a point where it's going to set a bunch of hit set up his hit points to a certain point so that you you it knows you can. You can beat it, but you can't beat it before that. It's like it's it's less likely that you'll be able to beat him before a certain point. So that th there there's enough tension that the fight lasts long enough. You know what I mean? All I'm trying to do here is guarantee that the fight lasts long enough that the tension is builds up because you're almost at those spikes. You know what I mean? Your player is like right there at those spikes. The the the, the fight's gotta end right in that that section somehow. Oh, right, yeah, to beat him, right? If you wanted to actually beat him sooner, then yes, you could probably use some kind of cheat that would somehow beat him sooner. Because you do have you do have the glove at that point. Marketers, man, getting marketer calls. What's that, what's VAC? Mouse macros? But the game, the game does have a certain timer built into it that it can't, an entity can't take damage um, for like 300 milliseconds or something like that because it's got invincibility. Oh, Valve. Valve has an anti-cheat thing? Okay, so 50 hit points was maybe too low. What was I supposed to do here? Oh, really? Wow. All oh, right, it kept on running this over and over and over and over and over. Oh, he can gain health, I guess. Here. HP is greater than 60, HP 50. Uh, oh no. <laughs> what 
What the hell happened there? Ah! Sorry, I think I've mess I missed your last message there, Salad. running that. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, they're attached to your Steam account? Really? I did not know that. Okay, so his position needs to be something more like... Well, the middle of the screen is, yeah, we have, like that's about the middle of the screen. Um, and then hit points, why did that, why does his hit points? That should have been, that logic should have been right. Hit points. I guess I'll just debug it. Okay, so what I'm really looking for here is if is the, the float valve two is around is sixty. I'm kind of confused. This it keeps on triggering this. It keeps on triggering this one bit of AI. I don't know why.
Yeah, HP is greater than 60. Why is it even triggering that already? If area flags before boss. Huh. Right, so this last one was tension. Hmm. Oh, I guess it just could be that the set hit points is not working. Oh, duh. But also the area flags before boss is triggering, which is not working. Okay, so... What was the command to set hit points? All right, here's where it's setting the hit points. This is kind of this is something that needs to be checked. But also the area the area word yeah, if area has these flags so if stir val 2 before boss, why did that not work? So thinking about it, I'm thinking these hit points need to go about half where they're at now. And that'll make it so if you're a really, really fast player, you're really good at this game, you can you can get the boss to be dead basically at the top of maybe the second the second screen. And then if you're just any an average player, you're probably gonna fight and get to the point where you're almost at the rocks, and then you if you're fighting really well well at the very end, you'll win, basically. So there's always that tension, or you're almost at the spikes.
All right, so it's finding the word. It's parsing the word before boss correctly. And it's returning if it has bits. Area. Okay, this is where we need to debug this one. I set HP to 55. Float dot float val zero. Stir val zero. Okay. Oh, that's HP Delta. I wanted to set the hit points, not add hit points. Hmm. Okay. I think I now I got to look at why. Um. Why I did it that way. Uh, I'm not seeing really a genuine usage of this. Setting one's hit points. This is all in the components when they're getting started. But man, I don't want to mess up other got other other entities just to like fix this one
it looks like most of the time it's been used if it's going to set someone's an entity's hit points it's been used with the name like set the hit points of this entity to that Ah, there we go. There's something. Vel. Oh, but Vel, it's fine. Vel can set her own hit points that way. It's the same math. Once her hit points get to zero, she sets three, which is add three, but actually. Okay, so that's fine. And now I know what can change here. So behavior HP, it's safe for me to go ahead and change this. So if you're at, if you're at like... Hit points of 200, and you want to be at 50. All right, so it's the other way around. Yeah, so if I want to be at 50. I'm currently at 200, then it would be 50 minus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I gotta make sure Vel still can wake up. But that should make it so the HP delta. Still gotta fight fast. stuck and invisible still. Damn, I wish I knew what just happened there. I guess I was in... had sped up time. Yeah. I should get 200 points down. Dude, it's 
so close. Oh! This, that's hard, even with like a. Okay. Oh, this kind of sucks now because now the meaning has changed. Yeah, I guess I need to apply like one word at the end if I want the meaning to change. Now I don't even have to check Bell's, um, Bell's code. It's good to do things this way, I guess. It kind of, you know, introduces something. I'd rather not have to do this this way, but I kind of already wrote the HP command in one way. So basically, if I want to set an entity's I guess it could just be the word total. It's probably a little bit more than Oh, did it again and that time I noticed that he wasn't there at the very beginning so he must have moved he must have got moved along with everything else this would be a great bug to solve but what, what's going on why didn't it trigger I guess, I guess it just never, I didn't stir about one. Rocket Bunny, what's up, man?
What's up, Rocket Bunny? Because it still didn't hit this. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe there is a behavior total. What are the many auto effects? You mean what are all the audio effects? There's lots of them. It's compression, distortion. You know, yeah, low, high pass filters, reverb. Expansion, gating. You know, phaser, chorus, stereo, utility, volume. Depends on if you're using, you know, a MIDI instrument, you can do so much more, you can do all these like MIDI effects. You know, like velocity, pitch bend, and all that. There's tons, man. There's tons of ways to make music different, you know? So it's some type two. Equals K B is there a total? Nice man, you're gonna build an audio mixer, cool. So why isn't this working? Stir about one. Oh man, was it? Oh, it could have been Xcode. Dude, whoa, you're gonna be in high school. Oh my gosh, man. Crazy. What, do you know what high school you're gonna be going to?
So HP Delta is 200. Okay, this should work. Did it work that time? <laughs> chance okay that's a good way to find this bug then every time I set it in into fast mode it does this okay it works now all of a sudden it just magically works so stir valve one was t total. It makes sense because that would have been stir valve zero. Stir valve one is total or two subtracts the HP. Oh yeah, hopefully you get into the IB school. Oh really? That's cool. Yeah, definitely try for that. Man, I hope you get it. All right, let's close the deep. Whoa. Close the debugger. Okay, yeah, it's hit points now. So HP is greater than say that's this needs to be more like uh, I'm gonna make this guy's hit points 420 for no particular reason. Oh, that's pretty good. I ended the fight right there, right before the, the spikes. Okay, let's do that again, but with um with the sword. Without the glove, I mean. <laughs> That's awesome. The stream froze. What? Are 
It looks okay here. Nice. Okay, so now he's got a now he's got a more reasonable amount of hit points where where you could actually if you're fast, if you're super fast, you have the glove, you have the chip, you can probably get him to like maybe a quarter health before this transition, and then you get him to like die maybe around here. But then guaranteed, even if you suck and you're really slow, you can't beat him. If he gets to around here, he's going to set his hit points to something magical. It's going to be a nice, tense fight to end this really cool at the end. So it's like guaranteed overtime. Your favorite basketball team is going into overtime. So I don't have the chip. I don't have the glove, which makes me way less of a... Hold on. Oh, he's already at 70. Attacking as fast as I can with oh the eye chazzle. Oh ho, ho. Yeah, so that's gonna really put the tense the tension pretty high there. I like his hit points as at about that amount. That really seems to work pretty well here, dying like almost at the end. Now let's try it again with the chip and the glove. Okay, this time I'm gonna fight as fast as I can. See how much. See much. See if I can like for. I want to guarantee that he can't die on the first screen, even if you're fast. We got time sped up a little bit here, so I can do this you know, in a more reasonable fashion. Do I have fear armor? Yeah, about 1200. It's definitely not even at half. Okay, there he's about at half. Why is he, yo, no, he's not even at half yet. Now he's about half, 800. 700, 400, 300, 200. Yeah, I could beat, yeah, you can beat him a little bit early if you're fast. But still, not that early. That's good. I really want the boss fight to end about there. That's good. I love it. We're basically guaranteeing that this boss fight's gonna like end at a tense moment. Nice man. The first the first one went better than the first. <laughs> nice man, you got it. You got everything you need to know about streaming. You just gotta Say funny stuff like that. Okay, that's all we had to do to change all that code or all that work. Just ended up being that. But that's cool. Whoops. Okay, this is um, make fear boss fight end during the most tense moment. All right, next. Okay, next. There's the the another another flaw of this boss is that. It's cool that he's got these three different eyes where you can, you know, three different vulnerability points. It's cool. It's a good step in the right direction, but um, it still isn't enough to get you to really focus too much on other areas. So you're constantly either there or you're back over here, or maybe you're over here at this other eye on the left doing some damage. But either way, you're always kind of like, 
know what I mean? So that's a flaw. And um, the way that's gonna get better is to um, put some. I'm gonna put some attacks on the ground. So he'll he's gonna spawn some stuff. He's got this little this huge fear cloud thing that he spawns. But he, I'm also gonna put some things on the ground. So some damaging points where so like a, a wall of damage will appear like right behind you, and if you don't move, you're gonna get damaged by that wall of whatever it is. All right, it's gonna be an entity that gets spawned and similar to, this boss is gonna give you nightmares. I think it's a weapon. Um, it's called like the ice, yeah, the ice trail. Oh no, ice whorl. Yeah, and it's got shot foe, ice. Okay, it's gonna be like this. Call it a fear oral. All right. It's gonna have, it's gonna be darker. What, what color? I think the ice world should be just pure white. Confirm that. Oh, they are this like light blue. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna draw, let's get some separate art here for this. Sprites should be no shadow, ice whorl. Nope, maybe it's shadow. There it is. All right, now we just need a different hue.
Felicia Grog. What up, man? How you been? What's up, dude? It's been a while. All right, let's start with this art. I don't need to fiddle with this too much. Doing well, nice man. Yeah, everything's very well in my world. Definitely, man. Things are going really well. Did you hear that um, Songbringer is coming to PlayStation and Xbox? As well as Steam? And maybe other platforms, we'll see. All right, so these are gonna be Fear Whirl. Yeah, man, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, um, so yeah, I have a co-publisher, Double Eleven. Um, they're helping me get it, they're helping me with everything, like getting it on PlayStation, mm -hmm. Xbox, and they helped out getting me to um, PAX, a couple months months ago and all these events at GDC and stuff. So it's been a freaking, it's been a whirlwind of awesomeness. Okay, we'll leave the ice sound effect for a moment. And it's going to have fear damage instead of ice damage for sure. Okay, we got these ready. Now the fear boss needs to like spawn them. So he's gonna have a new kind of attack where he spawns these fear wall thingies. Oh yeah, he's got an attack that does a whole bunch of subsequences. Thanks man. Yeah, I, you know, it's really great about making Songbringers. It's like my dream game. You know, I've, I've always, not always, but like I've dreamt of making a game sort of like in the vein of old, you know, classically inspired action RPGs like The Legend of Zelda. But I've always wanted it to be procedural, man, for years, decades. Decades I've wanted this. I've always wanted a game that was like that sort of Zelda game style play, but didn't, it, it could surprise you and you could solve everything in multiple different ways. It never railroaded you into one kind of decision or in taking one path. It allowed so many more paths. And that's what I loved about the first Zelda is that it, it did that. So. I'm glad. I'm finally glad to be doing this. It's my dream game, man. Okay, this is where it does. It spawns a whole bunch of things and stuff. So he'll do like a new sequence where he goes select if Rand is less than, I don't know, something big, a half maybe. And if count fear whirl zero then we're going to spawn some fear whirls it is man it's a reality it is i've been playing this game lately and i like it need to target the hero though probably already has the target hero but anyways So he's not changing any of his targets. He might need to. Might need to open up all his targets or close some of his targets. He goes into mode two, mode three, mode 10 here. Which mode should I go in?
Mode 2 is when bombs drop. Mode 3 is when it does gas. So what gets him back to mode... Oh, he goes into mode 1 when he's got his shield up. Shield down is mode 10. That's it. What's mode 10? Mode 10 is reset. Oh, right. He goes there and he resets his state of all of his... Yeah, this is what we need to do. Mode 10. So we'll spawn three of these instantly. There you go. Done. You got it. When the game is finally at like version 1.0, which will be soon, very soon. All right, it's a deal. We'll do it. I'll do a full-on playthrough. I don't know, and these are going to be based on the the target's position. Okay, I'm just going to put some special logic in there for the position of the fear. Quarrel. There you go, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for you guys. Make it a game. It's cool, dude. So in the create AI, it like creates this, well, actually in, we should check the spawn. Not area spawn, um, AI system spawn. Okay, I just looked over this code, and indeed, if I change the position of the AI here in the create AI function, it's not going to mess up the spawned position because it actually uses from here on out, it uses spawns position. So it's whatever gets created here. So inside this function, I can go and set a special point for any anytime you create one of these fear worlds, it'll just create them right behind the player. Oh, and does that have an index? I 
it does. Int i is parent eid, so it's a live parent eid i. A live parent eid i. Profile count? Good. No, it should be. Oh, okay, I guess that works. Wait, no. It should count. It should count the profile every time. There. So now we'll have a proper index. So if there's already one of these, the index will be one. And so when it spawns the AI here in this function here, it can use the I as well based on its position. So you got, where do we have the, do we have the hero yet? Oh, okay. So the position is going to be the game scene, hero, position, pause, and then adding in for sure it's going to be behind him and to the left or the right, depending on the eye. So p.y minus equals block size dot y times maybe like three or four. Let's put them at three at first. So hopefully that increases the tension. And then p dot x minus equals one times or plus equals Negative one plus i, something like that. One minus i. Google open up their digital garage. You can take free courses. Whoa, cool. That's sweet. That's really neat. Digital garage, I like that. That's really cool. All right, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but we created a new kind of attack for this boss. He's got these fear whorls that are supposed to appear right behind you. Oh, they switch up cities, oh wow. Interesting. Oh, it is just sitting there running. Okay, they keep on getting created right by him. Yeah, it doesn't use the position at all. 
Mm, okay, well, I guess I gotta debug this. Oh, wait, it doesn't. Oh. I see what's going on. Okay, I think I got a good way to do this. I was like trying to think of like, okay, maybe I can do it like a a janky system where it depends on um depends on knowing that the that it has to be that this you know it only applies to fear worlds. Um so instead of doing it that way, I'm just gonna do this special word called area. Where it uses the areas create AI. It just relies on the areas function rather than anything else. So now in AI system, when it's setting the position and stuff. If sub type Two. I hope it, I think it's two equals Okay. Num values is greater than one. Stir val one. It's rand. I think that would just be subtype. Got spawn, fear whirl, area. That's type. Oh no, that is subtype two. Okay, I need to make sure that the breakpoint hits there.
Okay, this behavior, we are, yeah, spawning a fear whorl. Stir valve zero, zero, damn it, that's not right. There we go. Good, so it was subtype 2. It's going to set pause to zero. Let's see that. All right, good. It's got passed in his fear world, pause zero. Should allow create AI. going on but it didn't work Oh, I can't create it. Why the heck not?
What the hell? Oh, it's... Does that require valid pause? Oh my god. That's what it was? Adventures in debugging. Oh, still, oh, damn it. Oh, man. I just gotta take a break from this. This debugging is frustrating me. But anyways, what I wanted to happen there for, this, for those glowy purple things to spawn right behind the player. Be like a wall right behind you that he's pushing you into all the time. He's like, like, oh, there's another wall. Oh, there's another wall. There's just walls everywhere. So I'll get it figured out. Uh, so it's time to cook some dinner, take a break, forget about my frustrations, and think about food in my belly. So thanks a lot for watching, you guys. It's good chatting with y'all. And, um,. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good one.